should be good. Hey, good morning. A call to order the Harrisburg Area Transportation Study meeting for Friday, April the 22nd, 2022. Um, I believe you can look on the screen and see all the participants on there. We do have a quorum. We have the coordinating committee meeting minutes from February 25th, 2022 in our packet. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Ray Green, Penn Dot Central. Great, thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. We also have the technical committee meeting minutes from April 8th, 2022 in our packet. Uh, therefore, your information. We'll move on to tip modifications, and I believe that'll be Nate. Nate's on, right? Yeah, Ray, Ray, are you handling it? Yeah, sorry. I, oh, there's Nate. I was just getting unmuted. Um, Thanks. Yeah, so uh, action number one, or I'll just go over the, the, some of the administrative modifications here, uh, quite a few in your packet. Um, the first one I'll go over is uh, number one, uh, Linton Hill Road Bridge Project. Uh, we're decreasing the construction phase of the Linton Hill Road Bridge in federal fiscal year 2022. And that is being, de being decreased by 617,000. And that is to uh, the low bid amount for that project. And that consists of a bridge replacement on Linton Hill Road over the Little Juniata Creek in Penn Township, Perry County. Uh, next project, uh, action number five, we're increasing the construction phase of Market Street US 22 uh, in federal fiscal year 2022 by approximately 397,000. And that increase is to the low bid amount. Uh, the next project I will review is, sorry, I'm trying to get through my notes here. Uh, there's starting with action uh, 62 or actually uh, 58 uh, through 64, I believe. Uh, we're adding the PE phases for a few different resurfacing projects. So we have, uh, we're advancing the preliminary engineering phases for resurfacing um, on Big Spring Road in Perry County, also Schaefer's Valley Road, that's 274 and 233. Uh, also Fishburn Road, uh, SR 743 in Dolphin County, uh, Walnut Bottom resurface on 174 in Cumberland. Uh, these are all being, they're, they're all funded on the draft program for construction, but we're advancing the PE phases to, on the current program to get a, get a head start on that. Uh, we had funding available uh, related to uh, funding being provided by the infrastructure bill. So we had some funding flavor changes that we were able to make there and free up some funding and get uh, a head start on those, those projects. Um, other than that, I don't believe we have any uh, amendments for this meeting, but if there's any questions about any of the other actions, um, I, can, I can try to answer those questions now. Any questions for Nate? I just want to remind everyone that Nate kind of went through a, a bunch of projects there. Just as a reminder, the, the web map that Steve's using to kind of navigate and show everything is available to everyone through that, through the meeting packet. So if you have other, you know, as he's going through or even before or after the meeting, you can always uh, go through and kind of look through these, through these projects at your own speed. Thanks, Andrew. And, um, I was reminded, so whenever we make a motion, just so since we're not in person, if you could state your name when you make your motion in your second, so we make sure we have our minutes correct. It's my understanding uh, we've had some difficulty trying to remember who said what. So if you could just help everybody out since we can't see your face. Uh, we'll move on then to program and plan updates and 
we'll start with bike ped and that's andrew thank you uh, i have a couple things to cover we'll first we'll start first with the the bike share so as we've talked about in recent meetings um we're Pat staff, Tri-County staff is working to kind of reestablish, re-implement the Harrisburg bike share, uh, which had existed, I guess it started in 2018 or 19, was very successful. And then when the pandemic started, Zagster, the vendor basically went bankrupt. So it kind of abruptly, lots of bike share systems in the, in the region and in the nation as a whole kind of ended almost overnight. So um, we've been working to kind of, to get that restarted. We have some money programmed on the tip to, to kind of help that along. Um, we distributed an RFI, it, it, it was due in mid-March. We received five submissions. Uh, we reviewed the submissions internally. We met with our steering committee and stakeholder committee uh, kind of to discuss how to move forward. Um, on the screen here, you can see we included a in the meeting packet a summary of, of a, a kind of a brief summary of each each response, as well as Steve, you scroll down a little bit there, then a paragraph, you know, of, of another a short summary of the of the discussion our bike pit, or our bike share steering committee had. Uh, the end result was tandem mobility was kind of identified as the the most responsive to what we had put out as an RFI and, and best able to implement a system that we envision. So we'll be moving forward with fur further discussions and negotiations with tandem mobility. And when there's more news, uh, you know, we'll be you'll be hearing back from us at that point. Uh, so is there any questions on on bike share? And just a, we're going to follow, for the most part, the existing yeah, the idea, plan that was out there. So the idea is to kind of restart what we had right. or close to. Um, and then we have money programmed on on the tip, on the current tip in this fiscal year. And then we also have money programmed in each additional year on the draft tip with an eye towards some expansion. And we'll kind of have to, you know, I, I think we'll, we'll be flexible moving forward. But in the near term, restarting with some kind of short geographic expansion, I think, in, in the near future. If I can, I'll just add one thing. Um, you know, there were previously systems in Hershey, Lancaster, and York. Um, Hershey and Lancaster have already restarted their programs. Both of them happen to be going with tandem mobility. Um, York is in the solicitation phase right now, but one of the things we asked in our solicitation is we wanted it to be feasible that if you joined whatever this is called, Harrisburg Bike Share, that it would be doable that if you, for instance, took the train or a bus to Lancaster, or whatever, you could also use those bikes. Um, and that was one of the big pluses, I think, of tandem mobility. They made it clear that that's very feasible for them to do. So basically, I mean, the, the goal is here, you know, anywhere there's bike share in South Central Pennsylvania, you'd be able to use the bikes. So I think that's going to be a big plus moving forward as well. <laughs> Any other questions for Andrew? Um, moving on then, um, earlier this month, we submitted a DCNR grant application for some uh, funding support for our, our active transportation plan. Um, that, that plan will, will kind of combine and validate a lot of the work that's been done at both the regional and local level. And we specifically want to kind of look at developing. So in our RTP, we have the regional backbone, which is, which is a good start. But I, I think the, the a big component of this active transportation plan is really digging into the both on-road and off-road uh, systems to kind of fully develop that regional backbone and identify, uh, you know, how, how we can best tackle bike ped mobility at a regional scale, which would then allow a lot of the local plans to then connect to that. Uh, that's kind of our, our idea moving forward. So. 
you'll be hearing a lot more about this, you know, in the in the next 18 months or so. We anticipate work on the active transportation plan to continue through 2023. Uh, moving on, the next round of the HATS uh, regional bike counts <clears throat> is scheduled from the week of May 15th through the 21st. Five days, it's Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Saturday. We have 21 locations. Uh, all of the information and links and all, you know, all the relevant uh, stuff is available on our bike pet planning page of our website. If you have any interests or questions, please contact me. And then I have one you more. Calendars. I need volunteers, right. it's a volunteer effort. And we do have, we will be kind of changing this moving forward a little bit because we've We've acquired some video counters that will allow us to do some some systematic and, and longer counts with video and, and get some some more substantive data. But I think the kind of volunteer effort is going to be part of that moving forward. So the last thing I want to talk about are yesterday or in the last day or so, PennDOT has actually announced two different funding awards. The TA set aside. Statewide selections were announced. Um, everybody remembers we have our own TA uh, transportation alternative set aside. We have our own regional pot of money. Through that regional pot of money, we selected and, and will program on the upcoming tip the Quarry Road sidewalk in Hummelstown and the Cumberland Valley Rail Trail extension in Shippensburg Borough. Those are the two we selected with our regional allocation. Everything we don't select. From, from our region goes then to the statewide round. We actually had four additional projects be selected at the statewide round. Those were the Adams Ricky Park pedestrian bridge over East Penn Drive in East Penn Pro Township, uh, Hearst Street pedestrian improvements in Harrisburg City, the Capital Area uh, in Greenbelt, uh, Paxang Parkway, resurfacing revitalization and the city slash uh, Paxang Borough um, and the Cumberland Valley Rail Trail Franklin County extension. Uh, so last meeting, we talked about possibly uh, offering the rest of our 2023 line item, which was about 340,000 to basically reduce the, the need for statewide money. I, I, I conveyed that to central office. I haven't gotten a definitive word back. I, I emailed them yesterday that again, to kind of inquire about what, what the status of that offer was. So we may or may not still have money sitting in that line item uh, for 2023. Um, I guess it's under. Uh, Jackie Coons, it's Jackie the program Coons center. It's, yeah. the, it's the planning that yeah. does that. Uh, and then PennDOT Multimodal Transportation Fund Awards were also announced. Our region, we had four uh, applicants. None of them received any any awards. Uh, and we'll, we'll be reaching out to some of those applicants uh, for possible RTP implementation grants which we'll talk about here in a, in a little bit, but there's a lot of crossover there and, and maybe some opportunity to address some of the stuff that didn't get awarded through that, through our, through our funds. So I, I think that's all I have. Let me check. Yeah, that's all I have for Mike then. Any questions for Andrew? Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, just just a comment. Well, at least on the MTF, uh, they did make uh, in the in the press release it known that for the next round of funding, uh, they'll they anticipate accepting applications in the fall of 2022 for the fiscal year 23-24 round. Uh, so any applicants that were not successful, uh, the press release had that in there for for. Uh, future applications later this year in the fall. Okay. Thanks, Nate. And we'll move on to operations and safety. Kyle? Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jeff. 
Um, so the first item on the agenda for operation safety is actually um, a project we've been working with Kittleson and Associates Engineers. Um, we hired them to assist us working on some highway safety improvement program project uh, evaluation. So HSIP is a federal transportation program, uh, which is focused on reducing traffic fatalities and serious injuries on public roadways. Um, like other federal transportation programs, it's heavily data-driven and performance-focused. Um, so with that, you need to calculate a benefit cost ratio, which compares the uh, project cost to the disbenefit in this case, with in this case, excuse me, which is the economic impact of fatalities and injuries sustained through accidents at these given locations. Um, historically, HSIP has been one of the hardest uh, funding programs for us to utilize through um, kind of our project programming. So uh, we issued a task order to Kittleson Engineering to help us analyze programmed, planned, or projects on our um, HATS pipeline to really see what projects would be eligible uh, for HSIP and, you know, try and move them along as potential candidates um, and give them to the district and PennDOT central office. So Kittleson analyzed 39 total projects uh, from HATS and they found six projects that would move forward as potential candidates. So um, the projects are the Capitol Gateway Project in Dolphin County, 21st Street and Center Street in Cumberland County, Derry Street in Dolphin County, Eisenhower Boulevard in Dolphin County, uh, Paxton and Sycamore Intersection in Dolphin County, and State Route 34 Project in Perry County. Uh, so they analyzed these projects a little bit further, and if they could not get a positive benefit cost ratio, so you need a ratio of one or more to qualify, uh, then they broke these down into potential sub-projects. And this memo is found on page 53 of your meeting packet, just for reference. Um, so they broke these down into sub-projects and calculated uh, the corresponding benefit cost ratios. And the sub-projects are basically elements of the overall project that could be submitted as a standalone kind of HSIP project. Um, so of those, I believe we have six, we have six out of 10 that uh, meet the benefit cost um, ratio of one or greater, which is pretty excellent. Um, so we're gonna be working with the district and PennDOT central office moving forward and trying to get these projects uh, move forward and funded through HSIP. Um, so we're looking forward to that as well. Um, any kind of initial questions about this HSIP project? Yes, Nate, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to add in, add in that uh, even though it doesn't have the the ratio of one to one, uh, if it has a if it has a positive ratio, that, like even a 0.7 or just say it has a 0.5, that essentially means you could fund half of the construction costs with uh, HSIP dollars. So we could split fund uh, those those projects with HSIP and then some other funding. So I just wanted to make make the committee aware of that also. Thank you, Nate. Any other questions? Okay, if not, uh, the final update for me is that we have um, a new program that we launched last month. It is a municipal road closure sharing program. So um, Tri-County uh, partnered with a vendor to purchase software for um, the ability to share road closure information back to Waze. So as part of our Waze for Cities partnership, we have the ability to share road closures and planned events um, back to Waze, which will then show up on the Waze driving app in real time. So anyone using the Waze app can see road closures um, as they approach them. So we're hoping to um, get a little more municipal su um, support of this program. So we'll be doing a little bit more outreach um, trying to kind of bring more municipalities on. Um, so basically the whole point of the program is that if municipalities have a road closure, they can share it through this online web portal that's based off of Google Maps. It's pretty easy. And um, they can just punch in a little bit of information like the name of the street, the closure start and closure end date, uh, and then just provide an alternate route and a point of contact for the road closure. 
So it's pretty simple. Uh, we are the first uh, planning commission slash MPO in the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to be doing this. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, but also a lot of uncharted territory. So additional information will be coming out in the following weeks regarding this. So if there's no additional questions. That's all I have. Thanks, Kyle. I should have had ways on this morning. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll move on to uh, this gear 2023-2026 tip development action items. Andrew. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. At our February meetings, the PATS committees voted to forward the draft tip to air quality conformity analysis. Uh, the next step in the process is to move to the public comment period. Our public comment period is scheduled for May 2nd to June 2nd. Uh, within that time frame, uh, we have scheduled a, an in-person meeting at Strawberry Square in Harrisburg, May 11th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. But then we're also going to do two virtual information sessions, kind of similar to what we did with the RTP, uh, which we can then post the recordings uh, for later viewing. Those will be May 17th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. and May 19th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. So kind of a lunchtime and an evening session. Uh, and we'll also be doing extensive social media outreach and utilizing a GIS story map we've developed. Um, we anticipate receiving the AQ conformity report uh, actually on Monday. We should be getting the draft. Um, we we will be sharing, you know, that that's required to be part of our uh, public comment um, kind of packet. That's part of the materials that needs to be presented as, as to the public as part of that review period. And we can't move forward in the process if, if our proposed program does not meet AQ conformity. So um, we're asking for action and, and the technical committee recommended uh, proceeding to the public comment period contingent on passing this AQ conformity analysis. Is there a motion to accept? Yes, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Is there a second? Second, Steve LaPorte, Dalton County. Thanks, Steve. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thanks. All right, we will move on to the RTP implementation grant program, and that's the way Andrew. Thank you. Um, I think we want to. I don't know if it if it's uh, reflected in the in in the agenda kind of properly here, but I want to actually kind of jump down to the Harrisburg Gateway project, the Capitol Gateway. Hold on a second, I'm sorry. Steve's oh, back now. Um, we received a request from Harrisburg City for an increase in funding of approximately 267000 uh, for their Capital Gateway project. Um, uh, if you remember, initially, that was that was one of the projects that we awarded through this RTP implementation grant as part of it, our first uh, funding round. Um, some, some issues were identified through the safety review process. Uh, including uh, kind of related to extending the paving and, and the curbing. I don't know if, I don't believe anybody from Larson Design is on, but I, is, is Wayne, is Wayne, Wayne may be able to speak to the kind of what necessitated the, the, this cost increase. Uh, Andrew, Wayne Martin, I am here. Um, so at the design, um, the line and grade approval PennDOT requested that the paving be extended to the bridge joint um, to the west. So that added some uh, square foot of, of asphalt, which wasn't initially scoped. It makes a lot of sense, obviously, um, to not have a section of unpaved, um, you know, older pavement between the bridge and the project. Uh, another change, which we wouldn't have, no one would have known until the survey, was that the existing 
cross slopes of that section, uh, that block of Forrester Street are less than the design criteria, which I believe is like two or three percent cross slope uh, of the road, which would doesn't allow proper drainage of the road and will deteriorate the um, asphalt. So we brought, uh, had to bring that up with a wedge and level, leveling. So there was a quite a quite a bit of asphalt added. Um, and I think there was some um, increase in curb quantities um, that went up, but all the asphalt stuff was related to the um, existing condition and then extending the pavement limits. Thanks, Wayne. Um, so I, I, we're asking then for action from this committee uh, consistent with the technical committee recommendation um, to accommodate uh, this this cost increase. It, I believe it's it's through STU, although I, I don't have the detail tip in front of me right now. Nate may be able to answer that definitively. Um, but if, if anybody has questions about the specific funding source, I'd have to get back. Yeah, I'd say after the meeting, we'll we'll determine the funding source and it would show up as administrative modification at a future meeting, but it would be STU or STP dollars. Uh, this yeah. is Wayne Martin. I have a question is I saw that this project was listed on each SIP and I know that's notoriously difficult to use as mentioned. Is, it, is there any possibility of shifting the funding for this project over to H SIP and leaving more available funds for the RTP program? I think that's yes. our hope at this point, Wayne, by that being one of the candidates that we pushed to the district is that that funding source would shift over. Because if you remember from that table that Kyle was reviewing earlier, it has a, a significant uh, positive cost benefit number. So that, that that's that's the design. And again, that's a good reason we'll identify those funding sources at the next meeting as to how this is really being accommodated. But good, good point, and I believe the answer is yes. Okay, is there a motion then to approve? This is Jean, uh, so moved. Thanks, Jean. Is there a second? Gary, you be. Thank you, Gary. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, Andrew. Um, and then, so moving forward with the RTP implementation grant uh, program, we're currently looking at some revisions to the program. Um, most of the, they're, they're fairly minor, most related to a, a, like a minimum project size because we ran into some issues of, you know, at, at some point the, the funding requirements the funding level is so small that it doesn't it, it doesn't make going through all of the federal processes worth it. So we're looking at setting some sort of minimum uh, threshold for project size. We're also looking at requiring the construction phase so that if we're if we're awarding a project through uh, through this program, we want to make sure it's constructed. If there's questions about the constructability or feasibility of the project, that needs to be worked out ahead of time by the municipality or project sponsor before they come uh, to the program for either pre-construction or for construction funds. Uh, we're also looking at cost increases so this wouldn't, be, I mean, it, it is kind of relevant to the, the gateway project, um, but that cost increases that that are that result from kind of things that, that arise during during the design or, or review processes by through PennDOT's kind of normal function, uh, we would cover those under the um, under the program. Uh, but cost increases that are due to some other reason, um, such as possibly an underestimation on the application, those would be the applicant's responsibility. And we're looking at some language in the guidelines to kind of make that a little more clear. Uh, we have Larson Design Group 
it's currently <coughs> providing some some project management support. We would also look to engage them kind of on the front end uh, to review some applications and participate in the pre-app meetings so that we can hopefully catch some of these issues early. Um, and some other technical issues, uh, again, fairly minor in nature that we'll be reviewing kind of with between Pat staff and Larson uh, in the next few weeks. Moving forward that we look, we're looking at opening applications sometime in mid to late May, uh, wrapping up at the latest by the end of July. That would enable review evaluation and we could meet with our RTP implementation work group sometime in August. We could then have the recommendations for selection back in front of this committee in September for kind of immediate action to get added to the tip once it takes effect in October. Um, we're also working, I mentioned Larson, we we're kind of increasing our workload with them a little bit regarding this. We have them working on some promotional material and, and so there's a short video to, to, to yeah, kind of talk, focus on municipalities to make sure that they kind of are, are walking into this with, with as much information as possible, kind of what, what the program is, but also, you know, what, what the federal process entails. So um, we're hoping that kind of generates even more uh, applications and interest in the program. So I guess, I think I'm actually, I guess we're asking for action also on opening up an application round later this spring once these program revisions have been finalized. Uh, the technical committee recommended that, so we're asking this committee to kind of officially endorse that. So you need those revisions to come back before us before we can do that, or we can just do this? I don't think so. They're, right. they're fairly okay. minor administrative kinds of things. Is there any objection to moving forward with the uh, with the uh, opening up the the process in this spring? I think without objection, you just do it. Yep. Sure. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Andrew. We'll move into uh, funded studies. We'll start out with I eighty one and Steve. Sure. Um, that and I've mentioned this before. The I eighty one improvement strategy is nearing its completion. Uh, I was part of a meeting yesterday where they are finalizing some updates to the website. Uh, the document itself is, is basically done at this point. Um, what I uh, expect uh, to happen here is once that um, website uh, is, is available online, I was going to send, and I expect that to happen in May. Uh, I would send that link out along with the final document to the entire HATS committee uh, membership. Uh, and then I think in uh, June, one of our action items would be to recommend adoption of that. It's basically an amendment to the RTP to cover the 81 corridor. So I'll be sharing a fair amount of information with you uh, and moving forward. A another thing that I'll, I'll just say that to me is a is a good reason to having having done this project and and proof that the concept worked uh is that you you may have forgotten we actually put some money on the uh on the tip for implementation and uh in a, as part of a pen dot meeting i had the other day they're getting ready to advertise a design phase of some auxiliary lanes in the carlisle area um, that we, you remember that's one of the top focus areas. So we have, the ink isn't even dry on the study yet, but we're starting to move into design uh, for various improvement projects as a result of it. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff in this report when you get a chance to look at it. It's gonna be a real, I think, long-term tool with each of the tip cycles uh, to work with the district and the interstate steering committee. We have a really good list of improvements along that hundred and some mile corridor um, that I think it should provide, that document should provide good guidance for quite some time. 
So with that, uh, you'll get something in between the meetings and we'll look to adopt the effort uh, in June. And it's on our website as well, right? It is. There's a current website that has the bulk of the information, but there's some updates going to just get final products and polish it off. Correct. Hey, RTP implementation grant projects, Gene? Yeah, I don't I don't think Gene's Gene's not available today, but I'll just other than the Harrisburg project that we already discussed, um, the remaining, I guess, 13 projects are moving forward as programmed and planned. And I'll I'll add this uh, in the PennDOT meeting I had earlier this week with the district, they actually complimented hats on the consultant support that we had and how they how effective they've been in leading these municipalities through the project so and keeping them on track so i appreciated that and i, I think the process is is working well uh capital gateway andrew that's what we covered under that yeah but I, I will talk about the project pipeline go ahead um we did get, we have what, we actually got two transportation need forms in the past, I guess, month or so. One of them is for a project that's on the draft tip. So I guess everybody's in agreement. I guess that's good kind of validation that we're identifying things we should. Uh, but the other one is a kind of a new need. We'll be back in touch with the, with the municipality regarding that. And if, you know, making sure everybody's kind of in alignment if so, it'll get added to the pipeline moving forward. Uh, and then I also just wanted to add that, you know, we've, so we're kind of at the tail end of our tip development. Within the last two tip cycles, we've added something like 15 to 20, I don't have an exact number, but it's more than 10 things have come off the pipeline to become active tip projects. So we're going to be kind of undertaking later this kind of summer and fall in earnest, uh, kind of a, a, an outreach effort to repopulate those transportation needs on the pipeline so that we're, as we move things off, some stuff will come to the top that still that, that remains, but we also just want to make sure we're keeping that, that pipeline as comprehensive and up to date as possible. So um, if you're a municipality or, you know, anybody can submit a transportation need form through our website, through it's available on the Tri-County website as well as the Hats Regional Transportation Plan.org, kind of our, our RTP website. Um, so we're kind of always looking for those. We'll be doing some targeted outreach, but if anybody on the call has an idea or a need or a problem, um, feel free to either submit a transportation need form or contact either Lauren Weaver or myself. Thank you, Andrew. Any questions of Andrew? Okay, we'll move into projects and development and Nate. Thank you. Um, so just to highlight a couple projects, um, we have, I'll say the last two projects uh, in Perry County on 22-322 that are being let here. Uh, they'll be let uh, before the next meeting. Um, that, that does include uh, part of the 11 and 15 interchange, some of the uh, pavement and concrete there is in pretty bad shape. So we're actually uh, doing that as one of the reconstruction uh, sections as part of uh, a central office request to do some reconstruction in that area. Um, also as part of that project, if anyone travels that way, 322 west to 11 and 15 north, uh, there's a slight modification to the ramp there that's gonna take place uh, essentially allowing people coming from 322 to 1115 to just merge in and 1115 will be uh, neck down to one lane there uh, after the the exit from 1115 to 322 west so um, just a modification there to improve safety that can be you know things that can be implemented in uh, projects to provide a safer means of travel for folks uh, also, uh, just down the road from there, uh, the Riverlands uh, Safety Improvement Project, along with the Clarks Ferry Bridge. Uh, right now, uh, Federal Highways has identified that project as a, a significant project. Um, so 
right now they're going through and analyzing what type of environmental document that's going to need to be completed uh, for that project to get through preliminary engineering. Uh, those still being discussed with FHWA, but if we move into an environmental assessment that could delay the project even further, uh, we are displacing, I guess, more than 10, 10 residents there. So uh, that, that could slow the project down uh, at that standpoint uh, from, from delivering, uh, but we were still in that discussion with FHWA. That's the projects in development I have. If there's any questions, can take them. And if not, I'll move right into the construction update. Nate, I, just two questions came up. One thing you said reminded me, did we ever solve the, or did we resolve the sign issue that was going on up there? I haven't heard about that. Yeah, the mile markers. Oh, the mile. Yeah, so the mile markers. Um, so they they were supposed to be uh, installed as part of the river relief resurfacing project. Um, they had an initial order in, um, and the signs were like anything else. Supply and demand is pretty difficult right now. So the signs are ordered, and if you drive three twenty two regularly, you'll see. Uh, different markers out there on the side of the road that's that's locating where those signs will be put in then um, but they're still trying to procure the signs at this point okay and then the second question where are the 10 residents that are getting this displaced uh i'd have to i'd have to find out from the project manager i know there's some right as you come on 322 west off of clark's ferry bridge on the right hand side there's actually some residents back in that area um, the other ones, I would have to find out exactly where the other ones are residing. So it's, it's that portion in Dolphin County still right there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. There's actually... I don't realize there were that many residents. I know the buildings, in there, but I didn't realize there's that many residents. Yeah, I think some of them may be quote businesses or right. whatever right. in that area. It's it's an unusual mix. Right. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Yep. You say you have something else? Yeah, I was just pausing there for any other questions. You're gonna go into status report? Yep, I'll go into the status report. So yeah. Cumberland County. Um, I-81 resurfacing from milepost 26 to 37. Uh, this was a new enterprise project uh, that they received notice to proceed back in 2019, uh, but they're doing some final uh, shoulder backup, sealing of joints. Uh, they're looking to complete some final paving on, on the ramps and on the main line. Uh, so we're looking to have that project wrapped up hopefully by the end of July here, uh, pending any any weather delays, but they're also going to be putting down the final pavement markings and legends and uh, and and guide rail in that area. Uh, Carlisle Pike resurfacing uh, that on 1010. Uh, contractors Pensy Supply they were issued notice to proceed uh, June of last year. Uh, they they began work on the ADA ramps here last month, and that'll continue until about late April, which then they'll start with. Uh, replacement of uh, base layer of bituminous milling and paving operations. Uh, current completion date for that project is August 29th of this year. A uh, project that was let here back in January on I-81 from uh, exit 59 to the Wade Bridge. Uh, that that con contract was awarded a new enterprise, about $21 million. Uh, contractors currently uh, completing tree removal and drainage work, drainage prep work. Um, once all that is completed, uh, they'll start working from the I-81, 581 interchange on the northbound direction uh, on milling and uh, paving three miles along, along that section. And then they'll also be working from the Wade Bridge uh, three miles in, in the southbound direction. So uh, simultaneous construction on each side of the roadway there on uh, three mile sections. And that's the current completion for that project is November 21st 
of next year. Uh, the next project that'll cover uh, 2033 Creek Road Bridge, or actually, sorry, SR11 Carlisle Pike Resurfacing, uh, new enterprise there uh, won that bid, uh, 2.9 million. Uh, they were issued notice to proceed back here in February. So they're, they've started work on uh, the ADA ramps also here uh, beginning of April. Uh, once that's completed, uh, they'll be doing night shift work uh, to perform drainage work. And then they'll continue night shift work for the milling and paving operations through the spring and summer, looking to have that wrapped up in August of 2022 also. Uh, Next, getting into Dolphin County. Um, believe it or not, there's still some work that's being completed on uh, the widening at, that's out there. Uh, a lot of it's um, in the retention basins uh, that are out there. So there's you'll see see some active construction out there, but for the most part, that, that project went very well and has opened up. Um, kind of move down to. Uh, well, we talked about this earlier, the River Relief Project. Um, so they're, they're starting to work on the mainline guide rail installation. Well, actually, that's complete. Um, so yeah, they're still waiting on uh, those signage, but they're also working on the milling of the ramps. Uh, if most of you drive that, you'll, you uh, get to drive through the, the bumps there on the ramps. Um, but that paving uh, should commence here soon on, on those sections. Uh, another project of interest, the Paxson and Dairy signal improvements. Uh, most of the work, well, the work's still ongoing. Right now, the contractor is awaiting delivery of new radios for the signals. Again, that supply and demand um, affecting a little bit of the schedules here for our contractors, but hopefully we get those radios soon to, to finish that project up uh, by November 5th of this year. Um, Next, the Chambers Hill Road resurface project uh, that was sectioned out there um, from Spatar Township, uh, High Point Boulevard to Ridge Avenue. Um, the contractor for that was Pensy Supply, uh, $1.5 million. They had notice to proceed August 9th of last year. So they began uh, milling and paving here just a few days ago. So that project's anticipated to be wrapped up here in September. Uh, the second round of the river relief bridges uh, within the 2281 interchange uh, has, has been let. Uh, Deblin of Mechanicsburg was the, the low bidder on that project, $9.8 million. Uh, they got notice to proceed last year. Uh, they started working here in the beginning of April, doing sounding on the substructure. So they'll, they'll start seeing some similar activity to the past couple of years on, on the other bridges, setting up uh, and taking care of the, the piers and abutments on those structures and um, other activity on the bridge, bridge decks. Uh, another project in Dolphin County, uh, SR-147, the demo project. Uh, so J.D. Ekman got that won that project with a low bid of 197,000. Uh, notice to proceed was issued March 2nd. Uh, they, they have the electric disconnected. So they're, they've actually, they started demolishing the structures on April 18th. So a lot of that might be down now, uh, but they're looking to wrap that up here in the next few days. Um, that, that project's to support the resurfacing project and truck turning movements uh, that will be implemented as part of resurfacing project there on 147. Uh, Perry County, uh, SR34, resurfacing taking place out uh, outside of Newport, going towards New Bloomfield. Uh, so we're still working on the, the retaining out there, retaining wall out there. Uh, the, the, wet, the weather during the winter didn't help uh, the progress of, of the wall construction, um, but they're, they're gonna be continuing the construction here in April, hopefully completion by the end of April. Uh, they're, they're forming it up. They'll be placing the concrete. Uh, there were, they'll also be working on the pipe replacements here and then uh, looking to 
uh, do the base replacement work here. This actually starting this week, they've probably been out there starting, uh, looking to wrap that up in October. Uh, the US 22 bridges over PA 34, uh, for the contractors working on the, the eastbound structure, uh, they have completed the new abutments, two footing walls and wing walls. Uh, they're working on the new abutment uh, with, uh, well, they have one of the abutments done, the other one's being completed. Uh, they'll be looking to, yeah, work will continue to, for the placement of the new bridge deck and parapets for the structure. Phase one bridge work for the completion of the eastbound structure and ridgeway is, is to be, be completed on or before September 9th, 2022. 2022 to allow for Penn State home football traffic. Uh, and that is noted in the contract. Um, so they'll, the contractor will construct the new temporary crossover for phase two of the construction during September and November, uh, which shouldn't impact the, the main line. So then they'll be able to implement phase two of the switch in late November, early December uh, for work to commence on demolition of the westbound structure. And uh, last project, SR 1015 over US 22, just outside of Millerstown up in Perry County. Uh, project there, won by Clearwater Construction, $1.9 million. Uh, contractors issue notice to proceed here in February. Uh, they're going to start, mo they're starting to mobilize, uh, starting to stake out the project. This is just a bridge rehab uh, on that structure over US 22, uh, there will be uh, a temporary traffic signal uh, for each direction uh, for that location. And that's looking to be wrapped up by September of this year. And hope everyone's still awake, but um, if there's any questions, I'll take them at this time. <laughs> any questions for Nate? See, what you need to do, Nate, is like Andrew, he breaks them up a little bit so that people don't get bored during his presentation. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to do some at the beginning, in the middle, and the end for the next right, round. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, we'll move into our partners. We'll start with FHWA. Uh, yes, good morning. Um, Earlier this week, uh, Federal Highway released some guidance and a fact sheet on the, uh, the carbon reduction program. So I will drop that information then in uh, the chat box for everybody to uh, take a look at if they're interested. Is that it? Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thanks. Very good. Any questions? Thank you. We'll move down then, Cat. Uh, Eric? Yeah, I just, just have um, one thing. The um, In line with the federal court order uh, on Patriot Day, we uh, made masks optional, and hopefully that'll bring some riders back. That's all I have. Thanks, Eric. Uh, I think PA Turnpike. Still one. Hi, this is Pamela Hess. I am representing the Turnpike. I do not have any updates at this time. Um, there may be others representing that might have updates. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Pam. Uh, SRTP. Yes, hi, good morning. Laura Heilman here with Commuter Services. Just a brief update. We've been really busy with the rise in gas prices over the last few months. Um, just in March, we conducted over 70 meetings and events at some employers within the Tri-County region, including Phoenix Contact, UPS Middletown, Amazon, DHL, and Hack. Um, we continue to have meetings in the next few months, so we'll be busy going into April um, and into the summer months. We also increased to 200 new members in March and we are celebrating Earth Day. So happy Earth Day today. The whole month of April, employers are having a race to see who can track the most green trips. We'll be doing the same thing in May for 
uh, with our employer partners. And then lastly, I am going to put in the chat a link to our year end piece that just showcases some of the 2021 results from our marketing campaigns. Thank you, Laura. Any questions? Okay, I'll move on. I believe DCED. No report. Okay, DCNR. Okay, no report. Uh, any reports, comments, questions from legislators or staff? Okay, I'll move into local reports then, City of Harrisburg. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wayne Martin speaking on behalf of the City of Harrisburg. Um, two projects update. One has been discussed already, the Capital Gateway project. Current status of that project is it's in preliminary engineering, but the uh, design field view resubmission will, will be uh, coming in next week. So it should enter in a final design that has a current let date uh, of October. So I suppose it's still on track, maybe a, maybe a little bit behind, but we can make up that schedule. Uh, the other is the Second Street two-way conversion, which is currently in construction. They're doing some milling and paving operations now, and then they'll come back through construct the uh, mini roundabouts at the signalized intersections that are being removed at the uh, Verbeck, <clears throat> Riley and Kelker. And it'll be open for uh, construction. I'm sorry, it'll be open for two-way traffic uh, during construction, but uh, the work should finish uh, uh, ended. The work will be finished in November, but uh, end of June obviously would be uh, the majority of the um, you know, industry work. That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Other municipalities. I believe we have <laughs> Upper Allen on. Okay. Any updates? Okay. This is Aaron Trone. I'm here from Lower Allen. I just want to say, because we have okay. a um, RTP project and you mentioned uh, the use of Larson and they've been really great. I was going to give a shout out to Jason Hirsch. He's been helping us in the middle of our project. We lost our, uh, our engineers, took another job. And so I've been kind of trying to fill in and he has been extremely patient and, and great to work with. So uh, we definitely do appreciate that, um, that consultant help. Thanks, Aaron. Anyone else? Okay, I'll move down to other business. And I believe, Steve, you had the right item you want to bring up. Yeah, we added this last time, Jeff. I don't know if any of the individual counties have anything they want to offer. But yeah, okay. Steve brings up point. I didn't ask in particular, but Gene or Gary, do you have anything you need to bring up at this time? Uh, this is Gene. I don't. Thank you. Gary? Well, uh, everything in, uh, as far as the progress of uh, roadway work is pretty well just outlined. I will mention that uh, Penn State University has reached out to Tri-County Planning and the County of Perry on a project that they're proposing uh, with enhancement of carpooling and commuter, uh, which is a um, kind of a novel um, first stages of applying for a project uh, uh, with uh, funding from different than governmental sources, I'll put it that way. Uh, Steve and Jason Finnery at Tri-County have been very active with that. And uh, they're trying to make a deadline for that application uh, early uh, in May. And that's all I have. Thank you, Gary. Steve? Yeah. For other business, I'll just bring this back up. I think we talked about this last time. And and Gene, I know you guys uh, sent in uh, some updates on the membership. And I, if I remember correctly, John Owen is now from East Pennsboro is now Debbie's 
uh, alternate and and uh, this is actually switched the gene you're the you're the primary uh, person for Cumberland County but we do still have some uh, updates that we need there we heard from Wayne but the city has some uh, updating that they need to notify us about and I know there's been some staff changes and that kind of thing at the district which is probably why we have some uh, vacancies on alternates there or whatever but anybody that that has that uh, information uh, to update uh, representation wise we just request something in writing letter email whatever coming to us so that we can document um, updates in the membership of the committee so I just since we got some of that information last time, but are still missing a little bit, I just thought I would bring it back up, give people an, a reminder uh, to get us that information. And I just also wanted to add that the uh, hat annual report has been posted to the website. Last meeting I mentioned, we kind of had it out for review. It's up on the Tri-County website. Nate? Thanks. Uh, I forgot to mention during my update uh, for the, the I-83 Southbridge uh, project that there will be the public hearing uh, being announced here in early May. Uh, it will take place uh, later time frame in May. Um, also on the call is our, our new uh, assistant district engineer uh, for District 8 for design, uh, Richard Riesinger. Uh, he worked in the district here uh, a couple years ago as a design services engineer and has come back and uh, now taking the place of uh, our assistant district engineer for for design um i don't know if he wants to say anything or or not well thanks for putting me on the spot nate <laughs> uh yeah well good morning um obviously this is my first my first time attending the the meeting here so i'm i'm uh looking forward to being involved and uh and working with uh, everyone at uh, Hats and Tri County to to make uh, make sure PennDOT's meeting the you know the needs of uh, our communities in this area. So I'm sure I'll be more involved as as time goes on here and helping uh, you know represent Chris and and also Nate as well as as we move forward. So thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And, and then uh, I have one final note, which uh, you'll be introduced to our new district planner uh, at the next round of meetings. Uh, she starts on Monday. If you all remember Michelle Tarquino, she took a new position with uh, multimodal central office, uh, but we're bringing on uh, Kanana Korkatovic from Franklin, uh, Franklin County Planning. Uh, so she does have a MPO background. She's worked there for the past two years. So definitely someone from a planning background. Uh, and that already knows at least some of the District 8 region. Um, so look forward to her getting out there, conduct, conducting PennDOT Connect's effort uh, with our MPOs and uh, starting to be a, another familiar face with, with the region. Thank you. Is there anything else anybody needs to bring up? Well, just a reminder, our next meeting is June 24th. Uh, and with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Eric. Everybody be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman.